no, 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 Gogi. You are very silly. It is definitely Arsenal for Banker. <laughs> They're the best football team in the whole England. Oh, Ram, Ram, you are so mistaken. Look, after the form they showed last week, Spurs must win. <laughs> Arsenal in dead stock. No chance at all. Oh, Daisy. So what is it, Gogi? Don't forget the postal order. All right. Gogi, you are me sugar. Even with Danny Matthews, Danny Blanchflower, and Jimmy Grease together, they couldn't win. <laughs> Tottenham Hotspur are a dead loss. You said that last week when you ruined the lip plan. Lip plan? I told you, the plan. It is lip plan. I hey, you you get, me. Me. get off the run. And the same to you. Bordeaux's a long flight, even for my little Esmeralda. Yes, but you don't worry, she'll win. I've got five bob on her beak. Oh, she's every chance, Mrs. De Vere. Every chance. Mind you, it's not just the money, but if my little Esmeralda comes in in the first three, I'm a dead cert to make president of our local pigeon racing association. Yes, well, now, while we're on this subject, there is one little matter that I would like to discuss with you. Oh? Yes, it's about your pigeons and my washing. Oh. My white washing. <laughs> To put it absolutely bluntly, when they've flown over, it's just not dazzling white anymore. Well, I'm very, very sorry, Mrs. De Beer. Yes, well, if you could keep the birds in the pigeon loft on a wash day, I would be more than grateful. Oh, I certainly will. I mean, I'm not one to gramble. My late husband, Percy, he would bear witness to that fact. I'm quite sure of that. Ah, yes, that's what I like about you, your sympathy and your understanding. I suppose it's because, well, you're a widower yourself. Oh, I know, you've got your pigeons and I've got my bingo, but, well, when you've been married, it's, it's not really enough, is it? Not really, no. Not really, no. I mean, I'm not grumbling. British Railways have been more than generous with the pension, but it can be lonely being a wheel tapper's widow. Oh, I'm sure. You're not a bit like my late Percy, really. Oh? No. Oh, he was massive. Simply massive. Massive? Big man, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, well, to return to the subject of Esmeralda, uh, you remember the procedure? Yes, I think so. Yes. Well, now, uh, when my little Esmeralda enters the loft, uh, the bell will then ring, take the little rubber ring off her leg, put it into the time clock, strike it and then take it straight down to the judges. Yes, well, I'll keep my eyes open for her. And would you like me to keep phoning you during the day? Oh, yes. Uh, here is a list of the telephone numbers where I will be available throughout the day. Oh, yes. 
same as last year. Yes, well, I'll keep you well informed, Mr. Quilby. I'm more than grateful, Mrs. De Vere. Oh, it's a pleasure, Mr. Quilby. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, Bye-bye, Mr. De Vere. Goodbye, Mr. Quilby. Goodbye. Hundred spurs still for my good. Coggy, you should live so long. Morning, Ram. Coggy. Good morning. Horace. Morning, Abdul. Look, very good quality. No, thanks. I got enough underwear. <laughs> morning, gents. Morning. Morning, Horace. Morning. Hello. Good morning, Sue. Morning, Mr. Quilby. Yeah, well, then. Uh, Good morning, Sue. I thought I'd missed you. Morning, Stephen. Good morning, Mr. Quilby. Can I give you a lift? I'm just running so up west. That's very kind of you. Mr. Quilby, would you mind telling Mr. Mansfield I'll be going by bus today? I prefer to travel with my friends. Oh, come on, Sue. Hop in. Don't miss a boat. Yes, go on, Sue. You get up the West End much quicker. And another thing. Would you tell the gentleman, if he hasn't the courtesy to apologise for his disgraceful behaviour last night, I don't want to discuss the matter or to see him ever again. Me apologise? Who was out with a photographer on a so-called session till 10 o'clock yesterday evening? Ah. Funny sort of business you're in, I must say. You always seem to work at night. Bye, Stephen. Take it from me, Rump. Out here, Goggy. Moose came for it. Hey, what's all this, man? Rhythm section. I don't care, Ross, if you're the Royal Philharmonic. Now, not on my bus. Yeah, excuse me, please. Uh, what do you mean, uh, not on your bus? Not on my bus. But how are we going to get to the jazz festival? Sorry, man, but that is your problem. This one is mine. Not on my bus. Discrimination? That's the word, Rem. Discrimination. <laughs> Look, man, I don't want to trouble you here. My bus don't move until this rhythm section is off my platform. You! And who else is going to move our instruments off your bus? No violence from passive resistance only. Passive resistance. All right. All right. That's the way you want it. It's all right with me, brother. Morning, Nosha. Good morning, Mr. Quilby. Excuse me. Hello, hello. A bit of dog and burning? No bother, sir. He, he was just helping us off the bus. Well, in that case, I'll give you a hand. Moose game, sir. Moose game. Yeah. Take a minute. Thank you. Who that be all, Bernard? Thank you, Nasha. Thank you, Bernard. Hi, oh, Nasha. <laughs> Morning, Bernard. Morning, Mr. Gilby. Do you like a wait? Oh, thank you. Not while on duty. Oh. Nice day for a stroll around the West End. Very nice. Is Esmeralda back yet? No, not yet, Bernard. See you later. No smoking inside, Mr. Gilby. Sorry, mate. Another traffic jam. I suppose there's a copper on duty. And it started to rain. I'm glad I put my Mac on. I must get one of those. Not a very nice day for you to walk around, Mr. Quilby. Oh, it's probably just a shower, dear. It'll turn out nice later. Yeah. What are you going to get, black or red? I think I'll stick to the black. Why not the red? Because my boyfriend's kinky. He's not a communist. Mm. Short game, swerving in like that. Why don't you? Oh. Is that a hand signal? 
I say, huh? you, take your dirty hands off my robes and go away. Right, that's it. That's it. What's the matter, mate? It just knocked me off a bloody bike. You were saying? Well, officer, I, I can explain. It was, I mean, we're, 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 we're awfully sorry, well, aren't we? Didn't we didn't realise, you see. Yes, we, we just didn't realise. Well, I mean, we're all men of the world, aren't we, <laughs> officer? Oh, absolutely. Well done. Carry on, gentlemen, you're doing fine. I've only just come on duty. I have all day. <laughs> well, I mean... Early morning rain. Give us a hand with this. Yeah, sure. Perfect. Here it. Thanks. What's the matter with the arm then? Rheumatism? No. Rust. Morning, Obadiah. Oh, good morning. Acts three and four. Horace, I would like you to meet our new recruit, Mr. George Pocket. He's with Fred's nude sexorama. They are daughters of Philistia, painted and ungodly, but who are we to judge them? However, Mr. Pocket, this is Mr. Quilby, our honorary secretary, what I've been telling you about. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Quilby. How do? I've seen you around the West End for years. Oh, really? Uh, do you wish to join our Sandwich Man's Brotherhood? Oh, yes, I do indeed. Ah, oh, well, in that case, sir, uh, here is the entry form. If you'd uh, kindly fill that in. Oh, thank you, Maggie. Uh, our terms are annual subscription, four and ninepence, uh, plus a further half a crown uh, just to cover the membership card, literature and badge. I regret no checks, not unless you come from a fixed abode. Oh, uh, and, and one other thing, Mr. Pocket. Our motto is a fair day's walk for a fair day's pain. If you'll take the advice of an elderly sandwich man, see it all happen, but never get involved. In other words, Brother Pocket, keep dead still. And wander not from the paths of righteousness, brother. Why, Obadiah? Mr. Pocket. Giant Electra ill. Hmm. Morning, Nick. Morning, Horace. Oh, are you all right? Palpating in the torchlight. <laughs> Morning, Sid. <laughs> huh. Morning. How's Gypsy Cynthia, Palm East extraordinary? Mum's very well, thank you. Sid, I just wondered how you fancied Esmeralda's chances in the National. According to the leaves, your bird's got a very fine chance indeed. Due to the presence of certain beneficent occult forces. What occult forces? Behind her. Ooh. The spirit of the element says it is so. Cool. That's fantastic. It's just like the weather forecast this morning. Just the same, yeah. I can't tell you, I can't tell you no more. Oh, you see, they, they buy their tea in bulk here. You don't get a good readable drag like from the packet tea. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, Sid. 
the giant electric eel. Then the bus did the fly. Goodbye, Lawrence. Goodbye, mate. Cool. You coming, Owen? Yes, I'm coming, Sir Fred. Hey, good morning, mister. Good morning. I'm bringing this beautiful carpet that I promised for you. How much? As we are allies, 50 pounds. I'm giving it away. You give it to somebody else. No, 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 mister. Please, mister, please. For this jewel of the Orient, I'm bringing it halfway across London. It's... Very well. Special price, 40 pounds, and I'm ruining myself. Look, Farouk, I've got a wife and four children to support. This is my last word. Twenty pounds. <laughs> I have three wives and one children to support. Thirty pounds. Got yourself a deal. <laughs> I'll be praised. Yeah. Ten pounds. Twenty pounds. Thirty pounds. God. It's a pleasure to do business with you, Goldberg and Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Kildare last night. No, I prefer Dr. Ben Casey myself. Well, you really missed something. Hmm? He did one of the best operations I've ever seen. Oh, uh, what was it? An abominable operation. Oh. With complications? Several. And he was marvellous. He was so gentle and quick. He's got such beautiful hands. Oh, you've noticed. Not many. Real surgeon's hands he's got. So long and slender and, and elegant in them rubber gloves. He's not my cup of tea. I prefer Dr. Ben Casey myself. Now, have you noticed his M? Yes, they're strong and airy. But lovely with it and ever so well kept. It's always wonderful at it. He knocked me out last week when that matron had everything removed. Everything? What, kidneys and all? Her kidneys weren't any good to her anymore. Not his kidneys, that is. See, that's what I like about Dr. Ben Casey. He is so very thorough. Well, Dr. Kildare is very thorough, too. And what's more, he's operating again tonight. Mm. Lily looked lovely in Lilac. She got married then. Of course she got married. Who married her? The vicar. Not the bleeding vicar. Who'd she marry? Ah, oh, who'd she marry? Well, you know, Peter. What, fat Peter on Cod Phillips? <laughs> he's not fat. Not fat? You weigh 16 stone. That's not fat, that's muscle. Oh. She'll be all right then, won't she? Better go for the honeymoon. The Coke de Jour. My handbag! No, dream must be. Uh, How dare you? Just who do you think you are? <laughs> Hello, Orange. Nice to see you. Are you ready? Oi! Where's my tea? Where's Charlie's tea? Where's Charlie's tea? Where's Charlie's tea? Where's Charlie's tea? Steve to Charlie. for Charlie. Forty for Charlie. Forty for Charlie. Forty for Charlie. There's his tea. There's his tea. Charlie's tea. Forty for Charlie. More tea for Charlie. More tea for Charlie.
I like that one on the end. That's a very good one. Boy! Do you mind? You cheeky git. What about my key? Oh, thank you, Charlie. You stand against the wall there, and I'll bring this in here, and I'll put it just there, like that. that what, what, oh, thank you. Just what we need. Oi! Please, that's my trouble. Never mind about now, that. Please, please don't keep pushing me, please. That's now, my I'm trouble. <laughs> thank you very much. That's marvellous. <laughs> right, where were we, darling? That's good. Just stand there. Fine, fine. Hold it. There, there. there. <laughs> Gee, thing. <laughs> fine, double. Down, double. Very good. Now, I think we'll just... Um, put that over the shoulder, shall we? That's nice. That shoulder first. Good. Hold it. Uh, nice and casual. Casual, darling. Very good. Uh, now I think we'll lose the spade, shall we? Just lose that. Get rid of it. Good. And uh, uh, unzip it. Yes. Um, yeah, just a little. Just, just zip it down. Just a little. That's it. That's fine underneath, darling. Oh, that's good. That's lovely. That's a very sweet pose. Uh, fine. Now just down. Uh, zip it down. Uh, throw it open, darling. That's fine. And just do the hair a bit. That's fine. And underneath, yes. And the leg, little more leg. That's fine, yes, we're on the brink of something good here, darling. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Good, that's very good. Now, just a uh, turn to the right, give one of your, you know, that's fine, stick it out, good. Yeah, nice. Mm. Big smile, big smile. Make it out of Yes, very nice, low level, very low that was. Yes. Now, just one more, I think we've got it. I think we can call it a day. It was marvellous. <laughs> I was not following you. I rang your agent and he told me where you were working and as I was demonstrating this car for Mr. Ridley... Oh, Mr. Ridley, Sue Langham, Sue Langham, Mr. Ridley. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? So I drove over. You... You make me so angry! Hey, steady on. Oh, Harold, darling. Don't worry, oh. we'll get you to a dock. So oh. it's Harold, darling, now, is it? What's the matter? Hurt your finger? Oh. Hope they amputated. Who's that? Just some car salesman who's always pestering me. Pestering you? I thought we were supposed to be in love. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, right. <laughs> Come along, Sue. It's only a tiff. Stephen's a nice boy. I know, Mr. Quilby. It's just that he doesn't understand. I want to make something of myself. And Harold's been such a help. And, and such a dear. <laughs> Do you really love Stephen? Yes, very much. But we always seem to be fighting. Oh, Sue, <laughs> you got the waterworks already? <gasps> yeah. Are you working this afternoon? Yes, we're taking some colour pictures in the park. By the sound gate. Oh, come, come on. on. Your nose and wipe your eyes. Oh. I'll be up in the West End. I'll nip into those car showrooms and have a few words with that young man. All right, eh? Oh, will you, Mr. Quilby? You leave it to old Doris. Now, come on, darling. I've got lots to do. You, you get off, Harold. Bye. Oi! When you sorted that lot out, come and see my old woman. She's been knocking me about for 20 years. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Father? 
to the springboard as hard as you can. Sorry, darling. This will help you to get your feet well clear of the box horse. You don't have to hurry. Now remember that. You don't have to hurry. That's all there is to it. I'm a little out of practice. How? Let me show you how it was. Thank you very much, Father. I'd be delighted to give you the benefit of my advice. But I wanted to show you, Father. Is it the back splits you're wanting to learn? You're facing the wrong way for the back splits, Father. Would you be after asking me or telling me what to do? Father. Shh, quiet now, Colin. All I want to know, Father, is this. Boxing
father, and my head in your eye. Must have been very painful. And that right cross. You ran onto it. It wasn't my fault. Not at all, Tommy. You're not a good man if you can't be a good loser. It was a beautiful right cross. Keep it up and God willing, come Epiphany. We'll slaughter the Protestant boys' brigade. Right here now, Tommy. Bye. Oh, Father. Oh, sorry, sir. Say it tomorrow, Father. Yes, bye. Good morning, Father. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Quilby. Oh, uh, Father, have there been any fine calls for me? Uh, not yet, no. Uh, will it be Mrs. Devere? Oh, yes, it will be, yeah. Ah. Oh, when she does, uh, would you be so good as to tell her that my next number is the Hilton Hotel? The Hilton Hotel there? I, I understand it's a luscious place there. Oh, it's smashing. They tell me you can get a nice juicy steak there. <laughs> you look as though you could do with one and all. <laughs> oh. <A> steak! Oh. <laughs> 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 Pen and ink. Tony, did you already open that new box for Gonzola? I'm no touch of the cheese. Two hamburgers, touch of chutney, pick a lily, and a breath of tomato sauce. And no onions. No onions? Definitely no onions. I've got a date with my bird tonight, and she can't stand to smell onions. It's no good, Goggy. They're not going to stop. It's these instruments. Okay, Ram. I'll stay here with the instruments. You go around the corner. Come and lift. It's a good idea. Here. That. And this. All right. All right. And here. Oh. Okay. All right. My friend, a any news of Esmeralda? No, not yet. Not a dicky bird. Oh. Oh! Deep, deep, deep. Oh, top, top, top. Oh, good show. Jolly dear. Absolutely ripping. I shall tell you what troop are you? Uh, Fort Bombay troop. Bombay. <laughs> Eagle patrol. Oh, good egg! I say... Uh, can I... <laughs> can I give you a lift? Oh, thank you very much, sir. Going to the gambry, eh? Uh, no, 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 no. Indian Jazz Festival. Uh, Knightsbridge. Knightsbridge? Uh, bit off our beaten. Still, Brown, I suppose this will be our good turn for the day. Day, hey, sir. Hmm? I never seem to get that right to ID, of course. How silly. Um, cost you a bob. Bob? Bob a job, boy. 
Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Kind Scout was a gentleman. One moment, please. Gogi! Oh, hey, excuse me, Horace. All right, Gogi. Gogi, we got a lift. Oh, but it will cost us a bomb. Bob? Bob. Bob, a job, go! Oh, most kind. And I think it's all this cabin to Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you'll never get it off. Oh, don't you worry oh, about nobody. that. We'll, we'll get it done for you. We'll get it done for you. Right around. Look at the hat. Don't worry. We'll get this kill for you. Get down! Run! Get out of here! Get out of here! Run! Push run! Go on me! On the top! Not here, go on the top! Everyone break it and put it on the top! Why don't you listen to me, go? Go, Keith! Why, this next door cut and do I want Oh, Goggy, can you not do what you are told? Run, I am trying my best. Goggy, let me put mine on the top. If you were you listening push to me, you would have killed me. Careful, Jack. I'll put it on the top. Oh, dear. What are you doing? I'm very no sorry. Panic. Lovely, lovely kind of You should start with this. It's a push. <laughs> push oh, do be careful, chaps. Oh, you are so dumb. Careful, what's up? Do your left. Do you have a car, chaps? <laughs> Seems to be the travel officer. Travel, sir? I don't think I'm in any trouble. But let's consider your position. At the moment, I can only describe it as unbelievably tricky. Excuse me, sir. Don't you worry, sir. I will explain. Good morning, Superintendent. Please let me to explain. This kind Scoutmaster gentleman has been most bountiful to us, most bountiful indeed. You, you see, Superintendent, we, we were just trying to put a drum and a double bass on this most beautiful vehicle when, when most regrettably, my friend's extension piece... No, no, Mahatma, Mahatma, who The extension piece, sir. Yeah, that is to say, <laughs> the extension piece of this most beautiful instrument. <laughs> the, the extension piece, sir, it caused some slight damage to your valuable material. Not being very clever this morning, are we, sir? 
I shall have to charge you with causing an obstruction on the Queen's Highway. Oh. Driving a mechanically propelled vehicle without due care and attention. Driving said vehicle in a dangerously overloaded condition and without good access. Carrying passengers in a position likely to cause serious bodily harm to the person of the said passengers and to the passing public. Damaging a metropolitan police vehicle and causing serious damage to its very ultra high frequency short range transmitting and receiving apparatus Mark IV. Oh, please, not the lovely spoon. Obstructing a police officer in the performance of his duty. But he was only trying to explain. Striking sir. a police officer. Oh. Ah, that'll cost you a bob. <laughs> Carrying an offensive weapon? <laughs> Fairly jerky. Forget about the bob. <laughs> we had a good day out today. I'm sure Brown won't mind with the bob. <laughs> Sir, the rubber dingo's oh, gone up. Bro, it might explode, bro, sir. Do something about it. You mind taking charge of this, sir, before it takes over the whole of the city of London? Introduce myself, Manfred the Magnificent. You recognize me, don't you, sir? That's right, I recognize you, yes. Yes, me with my eight Abyssinian lions. Yeah, that's right. You, sir, will testify to the savagery of the Abyssinian lion. I have the mark of the claw, which I can show you. Or oh, would do, except there are ladies present. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to <laughs> Cedric, the great. Please, ladies and gentlemen, give the artist a due. Now, the great Cedric has escaped from predicaments which would have baffled even the great Houdini himself, haven't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a term once, you know. <laughs> da -da. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not here today and gone tomorrow. I'm here today and gone today. He's here tomorrow. <laughs> da -da. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before your very eyes, manacled, and what is more, contained within this large mailbag, possibly even one of the great a uh, train robbery mailbag itself. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the great Cedric will attempt to escape from this bag in two minutes, 120 seconds. Greenwich. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Greenwich, meantime. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a little appreciation, if you please. Thank you very much, sir. A little appreciation in the shape of any form of silver. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Come along, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Forget the great Cedric. Please, a little appreciation. Ladies and gentlemen. The great Cedric performed a handful of coppers, a few pennies and a couple of green stamps. The great Cedric will not perform until some real money, real money, has been thrown in. <laughs> think you're doing. Now don't touch anything until a policeman arrives. Well, why the flyman boys just let your flyman will look at your flyman will go on, huh? I'd like to see your driving license. Yes, indeed. I want to take down your particulars. Now take your time, Bluey, and don't flash your claws at me. <laughs> oh, 
Well, now I'll go. You've got a lucky face, lady. Matches. Boot laces. Matches. Boot laces. What is that you, Fred? Matches. Boot laces. What's going on, Fred? Ah, oh, thank you, my friend. <coughs> You're most kind to an old soldier. Oh, thanks so much. Alan. You wouldn't have sixpence for a cup of coffee. <coughs> I said you wouldn't have sixpence for a cup of coffee. What the? Sure, Lord. Fred! Fred! Where are you? Fred! I say, uh... Excuse me, sir. Yeah, come here, darling. Here, come here, 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 here,
Oh. Oh, dear. Well, who are you, then? Oh, oh, that blessed little gesture gave you away. You're the bishop. You were standing next to him. That very day, same photocopy, but a different fellow, you see. <laughs> and not far out there, you were standing next to the Maharaja, weren't you, in front of the royal box? Yes. Don't you remember Viceroy Cup Day? Of course. He's the Bishop of Basha. I beg your pardon, dear. Shake hands with him. You know my old friend, Sir Malcolm Moleskin? Sir Mervyn Moleskin. Oh, Sir Mervyn, yes. Bishop of Basha. Oh, he's shaking his head again. What's gone wrong with my photograph? Aren't you? Well, tell me who you are, then. Uh, Quilby. Horace Quilby, of sir. Of course, sir. Horace Quilby. A hero. Shake hands. Shake hands. Shake hands with him. Be proud to do so. He's a hero. He's the greatest big sticker in the northwest front. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Congratulations, Quilby. I'm delighted. Sir Malcolm, you must excuse us, will you? Yes, yes. Please, yes. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. You're a living legend, yes. Living yes. legend, yes. I remember when you throttled your first tiger. Yes. Remember living the tiger. Photographic yes. memory. Photographic memory. Photographic memory. Oh, Quilby. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Right? Oh. Yes? Forgive me, sir, for interrupting. I couldn't help overhearing your conversation with Lord Uffingham, sir. Oh. Now, being a punter, I fancy a bit of a flutter myself, sir. Oh? Would it be too presumptuous on my part, sir, if I could ask you as an owner if you had any chance at all of winning today? Me as an owner? Yes. Oh, my Esmeralda! Oh, she's got every chance of getting into the first three. Esmeralda, sir. <laughs> Each way. On the beak. Six to one. Oh, no. Six to one. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you very much indeed, sir. It's my own. Six to one. Three o'clock. Captain. Hey, bye-bye. Oh, they're all potty in here, mate. Thanks for the boards. See ya. I'll let you know. Good afternoon. Uh, Stephen. Horace. What are you doing here? Well, I'll come about soon. Uh, pretend you're a customer. Eh? Oh. Oh. How is she, Mr. Quilby? Oh, there's no need to worry, Stephen. Sue's just a bit upset, that's all. You know, things ain't exactly what they seem to be. There's no need to be jealous, boy. Sue loves you very much indeed. It's only that she's young and... Well, she wants a little bit of a career. Well, listen, Horace, I earn quite enough to keep Sue very comfortably when we're married. I don't want her to work. Yes, Your Grace. Uh, yes, this has been completed to your specification. Uh, we hope to be able to deliver to you very, very early indeed next week. Now, well, she wants a little bit of recognition, a little uh, taste of success. Why don't you help her to enjoy it? Let her have a moment of glory. Show her you're proud of her. You know, Horace, I'd never thought of it that way before. Have you any idea where Sue is now? No, but I know she'd be late. She'd be out in the park by that big new floral display, down by the south gate. Yes, goodbye. I'll go and see her. You're quite right. I've made a complete ass of myself. I'll go and apologise. Good lad. All right, Mansfield, I'll take over now. Uh, no, sir, Mr. Crawford is a friend of... Run away, Mansfield. Uh, no, really. Now, so what do we have in mind? Uh, <clears throat> in mind? Y yes, well, uh, I don't think you've got anything suitable. Well, I assure you, sir, we have the finest selection of Rolls and Bentleys and top international prestige cars of the world. Oh, yes, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm quite sure. I just don't think that they would fulfill my somewhat peculiar requirements. Uh, we are noted here for fulfilling peculiar requirements. Okay. Now, if I might just show you this Phantom Five over here. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Beautiful, eh? Oh, yes. Uh, there's only one thing. Um, the doors. The doors? Uh, yes, you see, the doors have neither the height nor the width for my rather exacting requirements. Oh, to rest assured, these doors could comfortably accommodate a gentleman of your stature. Uh, they are a standard size. Of course, uh, should you require a special modification order... Well, I might have to have a new uh, body design. Uh, rest assured, with a long wheelbase, our coach builders could easily satisfy your requirements. Uh, now, if you would just allow me to uh, make a, a small estimate. Uh, special body, um, uh, 12,000. Uh, a cocktail cabinet, 
500, a uh, refrigeration stereophonic tape, I'll put those two together, I'd say something, 700. <laughs> Telephone, long distance, of course, you'd require there. Uh, 350, was it? Uh, television, um, uh, 200, I think that's about a, a... Well, let's say an overall figure of... Uh, oh, say, oh, roughly 21,000, give or take. Excuse me, uh, sir. I feel you're making a terrible mistake, sir. Should I require your advice, rest assured I shall ask to be informed. Until then, the rest is silence, Mansfield. Uh, uh, may I inquire the purpose for which you require these extra large doors? How else could I get in and out of the car with me boards on? Good day. <laughs> Oh, hello, Abdul. Salam, Horace. Had a good day? Simply spiffing. Arise. Cease. All right, Fred. Take it away. Right hand down, Fred. <laughs> Left hand down. Until three o'clock, I cannot get your tap shoes mended. I don't care how wore out you are. Hello, Mac. Be discreet, be discreet. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. How's business? Business is diabolical. Oh? I don't know what the public wants these days. I've got 20 loose, limbed, eye-kicking, precision, beautiful chorus girls. They moves as one, sometimes. Cool. Business is diabolical. Well, uh, in that case, I wonder if I could have a chance of a couple of complimentary tickets. Not a chance, mate. We're packed out. They're standing in the aisles. Oh. Has Mrs. Devere phoned? I don't told you if she had, Horace. Well, I don't give much for your Esmeralda's chances. Not with this gale a-blowing. Gale? Straight up. Believe me, mate, the whole of the channel is going to be covered with pathetic little bundles of floating feathers. Blimey. Well, nice to see you, Horace, mate. I do enjoy these cheery little chats of ours. I'll telephone for you, Matt. Oh. See you later, mate. Yeah. Hello, Horace. Hello, dear. Oh, Captain Senapod? Yeah, boy? Oh, your running time has been cut short. Send hey, me. All right, girls, take five. Hello, stage doorkeeper. Uh, no. Oh, my God. You don't say. Oh, no. What a tragedy. He, he was here a moment ago. I was just a talking to him. Yes, I'll get on to it right away. I'll tell him. Or is... No, Esmeralda. No, it's Federico, the contortionist. He's had a diabolical thing happen to him. He's done himself a mischief. He, he, I've got to phone the doctor. Well, don't stand there cluttering up the gangway. He may be all knotted up. We may have to thread him through. Here you go. Hello. 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 I um, heard on the car stairs and had another. Really, sir? What was it this time? I don't know. It um, flew away before they could get a look at it. Oh, I understand, sir. There were 69 of them, all doing it in the same place. And at the same time, I understand. 
Yes, sir. Well, I do think it's a bit strong. Well, the trouble with the brigade these days is, Jeremy, there are far too many hotheads in it. I thoroughly concur, sir. up there. Everything's, everything's just right. Get those people out of the way. You stand over towards the centre. Yes. Marvellous. Marvellous. Good. Now, just... You ready? Good. Rolly up. Oh, that's pretty. And the collar, I think, don't you? Yes. Just a sec. Won't be a tick. Won't be a tick. And one of the holdings. That's it. Good. Good. Very good. Yes. Fine. 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 Right. Yes, nice, nice. No, not too much of that. No, smile. Good. Lovely smile. And good. Just one more. One more, please. One more. Oh, <laughs> one more. Hold it nicely. That's it. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Right. Now we'll just try it with this gorgeous hat. Now be very careful with it, won't you? That's it. Yes. Oops, Daisy. What are you doing with that? Keep it near your leg, darling. Don't fall over the place. Morning. Right. Hi. Good. Yes. Right. Good. Hold it. Yes, I like it. I like it. One more, one more. Don't move. One more. Oh, hell. Oh, there we are. One more. 
Good, right. Now, give me the hat, darling. Yes. Give it to me. Yes. Undo the coat and the belt off and things. And, and, and the buttons, lovely. It's all SH today, isn't it? Red Phil, we've got a lovely day for it, haven't we? Oh. It's starting to rain. Oh, no. Oh. Don't step. Hang the head. Take it off. Take it off. Ah. Take it off. Take it off. It'll get wet. Oh, you silly girl. You tried to go back in the box. Take it off. Did you hear what I said? Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. What do you think you're playing at, you? There you are. There's your boyfriend for you. Now look what you've done. You big bully. Oh, Harold, are you all right? Yeah, I think so. I don't yeah. that coat, you big bully. I don't know what the wife's going to say oh. about this. Is it swelling? Oh, dear. Hey, look, are you married? Well, of course I'm married. Hello, I thought you were after Sue or something. Thank Give me a favour, I'm married. I've got four kids and a smash in the mouth, Hello, didn't I? I'm terribly sorry. Why didn't you tell Why me? Why didn't you tell him? Oh, you made, you made me so angry. I never want to see either of you again. Hey, Sue! 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 How do you do? May I call your particular attention to the notice and its contents? Delphinia Gigantica. You know, it takes five years from the tiny seed that I've nurtured with loving care to the full paragoric effect you see here today. These beautiful blooms are extraordinarily delicate. So would you mind taking your dirty great hooter out of their fragrant petals? Thank you. Stop, sir. Still very nice display of flowers, especially them cinerarians. <laughs> oh well, back to the Clydesdale. Cheerio, Warris. Cheerio, Owen. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, ta-da, sorry. Oh, 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 Your gun turret? It's your beautiful rigging that I like, Commander. Oh, really? Thank you. Thank you. Taking me 20 years, Indeed. you know. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, it's... I should hate anything to happen to it, you know. Yeah. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Commander. Goodbye. <laughs>
me life. I... Watch it, watch it, watch it. Oh. Watch it. Oh, it's great steaming compost. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, hey, uh, hey, 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 hey. You see. Look, I'm going to take the river bus back home. Why don't you join me? You could nip back to the studio and get changed and go and meet me down at the embankment in about half an hour at the river bus stop. All right? Come on in. <laughs> You're the driver of this vehicle? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not my fault, she's in the park, she's been out. Well, I've been waiting to see it, Chase. Oh, yeah, you see? Chase, you're on board, you've got a full deck test table. Right through the picnic. Really? There was just a couple down here. They were very nasty. It was very nasty. There they were. You see? Oh, I see. Yeah. A likely story. Yeah, but don't you see it wasn't my fault? I see because I was up there. I know your sort. Turn up, dragster. What's this? Here. It wasn't my fault. I kept telling you it was his. Nasty. Nasty. What you done? I'll get even with you. Very sorry about that. Very, very sorry indeed. What do you mean, sorry, Mr. Dean? Well, the concert has been cancelled. The club has been closed by the police. But, Mr. Dean, we have a contract to work here. Yes. Yes. We have a contract. Uh -huh. It is written here, uh -huh. in black and white. I know about the contract, boys. But I would call your attention, particularly, to Clause 12. Clause 12? Wait, wait, wait. This small print. Unless I am grievously mistaken, and that would certainly be for the first time, Clause 12 reads, the party of the first part, that is me, Mr. G.D., has the right to cancel without notice or payment the performance by the party of the second part, that is you, the seekers, in the event of war, civil action, strike, flood, fire, lightning, or act of God. Well, to me, boys, the commissioner of the Metropolitan Police is God, and he just acted. Sorry, boys. The club is closed. Good afternoon. Ah, uh, now speak to Mr. 
Mr. Mansfield, please. Uh, this is Mansfield speaking. Oh, hello. It, it's uh, Horace here, Stephen. Oh. Now, listen, I've talked to Sue and everything will be all right. Yeah. I've just had a bit of an idea. Now, this is what I want you to do, boy. Meet me down at the river bus in about half an hour. Okay. All right? Right. And what we'll do... Hello, Sue. Hello, Mr. Quilby. Excuse me, but the young lady's keeping my place in the queue for me. You've been waiting long? No, not long. About five minutes. Ah, oh, well. River bus will be along in a minute. There you are, then, Nobby. I've checked your yacht, Mr. Yurinovsky. Still there. Yes, we have some bananas. Right, oh, is that the London? Now, don't forget your weekend stores. Oh, I see it's going to be a working weekend. <laughs> oh, ship shape in Bristol fashion. Pass down the back, would you please? Right, hold the shoulders, get the shore. What about for the skylight? Well? Oh, do you want me to cast off the bow line? No, just don't tell a bit of string at the front, would you? Oh. There you are, Dobby. Thank you, darling. Oh, not your Rolex, ladies. Excuse me, sir. Let's give you a bit of a prod on your starboard. I don't do this for a living. Now, actually, I'm a professional. Oh, fire it! Oh, I'm tight, ladies. Don't panic. Maniac! Well, I think he's come right up your snorkel. You're claiming that.
sorry I've been a complete idiot. Forgive me. No, it's my fault. No, it's my fault. No, really, it's my fault. I said it's my fault. Time! Oh, my God, don't let's start that all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Quilby. Thanks for everything. That's all right, Stephen. Come on, I'll give you a lift, Alfred. Come on, Mr. Quilby, come with us. Well, well, I... No, nah, it's very kind of you both. You two want to be alone. I can easily take the river back. No, no, Horace, I insist. I won't hear of it. We wouldn't dream of it. Jump in, Mr. Quilby. Are you sure? All right. All right, then, Sue. Yes, darling. All right, Mr. Quilby. Thank you, Stephen. Stephen, steady on me. Hold tight, we're going in the water. Yeah. Go, what are, what are you doing? Come on, Mr. Quilber, the way you start the party. Oh, yeah. Come on, Come on. 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 Come on.